free UWorld questions. Hi guys, this is RN Daily Dose, formerly as Indai RN, and here I am to give you some helpful tips to maximize your study for the exam. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Free UWorld Questions An unconscious client is brought to the emergency department by the paramedics after being hit by a car. An emergency craniotomy is required. The client has no identification. What action should be taken next? 1. Contact the national database to see if the client has a healthcare proxy. 2. Contact the police to help identify the client and locate family members. 3. Obtain a court order for the client's surgical procedure. 4. Transport the client to the operating room under implied consent. An unconscious client is brought to the emergency department by the paramedics after being hit by a car. An emergency craniotomy is required. The client has no identification. What action should be taken next? Answer. 4. Transport the client to the operating room under implied consent. Explanation. Implied consent in emergency situations includes the following criteria. There is an emergency. Treatment is required to protect the client's health. It is impractical to obtain consent. It is believed that the client would want treatment if able to consent. In this case, it would be assumed that the client would want life-saving surgery. The healthcare provider should proceed. Option 1 This client's name is not known and there is no national database of healthcare proxy names or power of attorney. Option 2, this should also be done, but results may not be obtained in a timely manner. The client needs immediate surgery and this should proceed with the client as a John Doe placeholder name in the meantime. Option 3, this would cause considerable delay. Court orders are used for protective custody to take control of the care of a minor when the adult parent is refusing necessary life-saving care. Educational Objective Emergency life-saving care can proceed for a client who cannot give consent if it is essential and believed that the client would want treatment if able to consent. Care is rendered under the principle of implied consent. The nurse caring for a client diagnosed with HIV uses which infection prevention and control measures. Select all that apply. 1. Gloves when contact with body fluids is anticipated. 2. Gloves when starting an intravenous line. 3. Gown, gloves, face shield, and goggles for every client encounter. 4. Hand hygiene before and after providing client care. 5. N95 respiratory mask and face shield. The nurse caring for a client diagnosed with HIV uses which infection prevention and control measures. Select all that apply. Answers. 1. Gloves when contact with body fluids is anticipated. 2. Gloves when starting an intravenous line. 4. Hand hygiene before and after providing client care. Explanation. Hand hygiene is performed before and after providing client care. HIV is a blood-borne virus, and standard precautions are sufficient protection against viral transmission. The nurse wears gloves when anticipating exposure to blood or body fluids. Isolation gowns are applied if the nurse anticipates splashing of body fluids on clothing. A face shield and goggles are applied if splashing in the eyes is a possibility. The nurse should always don gloves when starting an intravenous line. Option 3, this would be an acceptable level of protective equipment if the client undergoes a non-sterile procedure with significant splash risk, such as vaginal delivery. Option 5 Face shields are used when splashing on the face or in the eyes is anticipated. A N95 respirator mask is used when caring for a client with airborne isolation precautions. 
Educational Objective The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend the use of standard precautions for preventing transmission of HIV. The parent of a three-year-old calls and tells the nurse of finding the child in the bathroom with an empty bottle of mouthwash. The parent thinks that the bottle was about one quarter full. What is the nurse's priority response? 1. Call the poison control center. I will give you the number. 2. Give your child about a cup of water to dilute the mouthwash. 3. How did your child get hold of the mouthwash? 4. What is your child doing right now? The parent of a three-year-old calls and tells the nurse of finding the child in the bathroom with an empty bottle of mouthwash. The parent thinks that the bottle was about one quarter full. What is the nurse's priority response? Answer 4. What is your child doing right now? Explanation Many mouthwashes have an ethanol alcohol content ranging from the equivalent of wine to half the strength of hard liquor. Because children's bodies absorb alcohol quickly, the symptoms of alcohol poisoning can occur within 30 minutes or less after consumption. Clinical indications include confusion, vomiting and seizures, difficulty breathing, flushed or pale skin, and coma secondary to low blood sugar. The exact amount of alcohol that this child presumably ingested is unknown. It is most important to assess the child's condition egg, behavior, mental status, physical signs, and symptoms. To determine if immediate emergency measures egg, calling 911, cardiorespiratory support are necessary or if the parent should be instructed to contact the poison control center option 4. Option 1 – It is the nurse's professional responsibility to provide instruction and guidance to the parent. Although caregivers should have the number of the poison control center readily available, referral might delay care and place the child at further risk of a negative outcome if the child is already deteriorating. If the child's condition is stable, the nurse should instruct the parents to contact the center for further evaluation and instructions. Option 2 – Giving the child water or any other liquid will not change the amount of alcohol ingested. In addition, alcohol can impair swallowing, placing the child at risk for choking and aspiration. Parents should be advised not to perform any interventions before contacting the poison control center. Option 3 – This response does not address the immediacy of the situation and suggests that the parent is to blame for the child's possible ingestion. Educational objective, when a child accidentally ingests a poisonous substance, it is most important to assess the child's condition, including physical signs and symptoms, mental status, and behavior. Based on the condition of the child, the nurse can provide guidance and instructions to contact the appropriate agency egg, emergency services, poison control center, 